Father God, we just come before you this morning and we thank you for your son Jesus who died on the cross and he rose on the from the grave today, Lord God. And we celebrate your son and his resurrection and we, we thank you for that power, Lord God, that resurrection power. Lord, that all that we need in life is in you, Father. And I just thank you for this time of worship and the word, Lord God. And we just hide it in our hearts this morning and we welcome you in this place. You said that you inhabit you take your encampment, you take residence in the praises of your people. And so this morning, we just worship you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hope will arise. 
death is defeated, the King is alive. I'll raise a hallelujah. I'll raise a hallelujah. I'll raise a hallelujah. I'll raise a Solid ground is falling out from underneath my feet. Between the black skies and the red eyes, I can barely see. I went up feeling like I've been let down by my friends and my family. I can hear the rain reminding me. In the eye of a storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the world, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. When my hopes and dreams are far from me and I'm running out of faith, I see the future, I picture, slowly fade away. And when the tears of pain and heartache are pouring down my face, I find my peace in Jesus' name. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the world, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. Oh, 
destroyed my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. You were made in control in the middle of the war. You guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm.
and take what the enemy meant for evil and turn it for good and turn it for good you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good you take what the enemy meant for evil Turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. morning church. Uh, Pastor Robbie is going to come up and share the word this morning. So we just thank you for tuning in this morning and uh, thank you Pastor Robbie for letting us continue the word. We love you church. Good morning church. I'm so used to people saying good morning back but an empty house. Um, you know, thank you girls for doing that. I know it was hard. Um, sometimes, sometimes words just don't do. Um, sometimes life sends you, a, sends you a curveball. And you find yourself in a situation where you're, you're at a loss for words. And when my wife was praying how God inhabits the praises of his people, it spoke to me right there because sometimes the road life takes you down and all, you don't have words. And you just turn to praise. You know, when, when you can't think of anything to say, when, when, you, when you're heartbroken, when you're hurting, you can always jump out and praise. And the reason I say that is we've been doing a lot of praising this week. We've been doing a lot of crying this week. But we have been doing a lot of praising this week. Because we just didn't know what else to do. Many of you know, some of you may not, but we suddenly lost our pastor John Flowers this last Tuesday and it was it was shocking to, to say the least um, but the first thing we did 
was we cranked up the worship worship music and we began praising with our whole heart. Yeah, it looked grim. Yeah, we were heartbroken. Yeah, we were hurting. But the first thing that was thought of was crank that music up and let's praise our God because he's going to get us through this. We may have lost a father. We may have lost a daddy. We may have lost a mentor. We lost a shepherd. And we lost our biggest cheerleader. If any of you knew him, he was a cheerleader. And he was always rooting for you. And your good times and your bad times, he was always on your side. So I got a message that's on my heart that's been stirring the last four days. Um, it, it's been to the point where it almost feels like a burden. I feel like I have got to get it off. I want to encourage you. But at the same time, if I look terrified, it's because I'm absolutely terrified right now. You know, I'm not afraid of giving the message. I'm not afraid of speaking to an empty house. I'm afraid that I'm not going to do the message justice. You know, because so often you give a message and then you review it afterwards and you're like, oh, I should have said this differently. Oh, I should have said that differently. And uh, I'm just going to trust God and believe, believe him. <laughs> I just saw a note. I'm supposed to uh, tithes and offerings. If you guys uh, are looking for different ways to give this week, check out our link on Facebook. We have all the options of PayPal, Zelle, uh, check, text to give. And uh, there's something else on there. Facebook's got all the links. Um, I want to assure you guys of something today. I even got a note on my notes. Bobby, follow your notes. Stay on track. <laughs> Just bear with me, guys. I want to assure you today that God is not shocked right now. God is not surprised. He's not falling off his throne because of what we're going through. He has not changed. God is good. And he's good all the time. All the time. One of the verses that dad's been teaching on lately, which actually for years, is Romans 8.28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. And who have been called according to his purpose. So I ask you today. Can God use this? Can God use what we're facing right now? Absolutely. One of Pastor John's favorite sayings comes to mind right now. It says right here that we know in all things. The first thing he would say was, what does all mean? All means all, and that's all that all means. <laughs> and he would say that all the time. So even in this, even in this situation, God's going to get glory. God's going to shine. God will use this. You know, Dad, Dad taught me some things over the years. Because uh, let's just say sometimes in the past I was quite the knucklehead. You know, and uh, I remember a time in my life where I thought really everything was done. I thought ministry was over. And I hurt my family. I hurt my friends. I hurt people who looked up to me. I just fell flat on my face. And I own it. You know, but I got to the point in my life where I was like, well, that's it. God's done with you, buddy. But Dad, Papa John, Pastor John, he had a way of reaching down into someone's heart and giving them hope when there was no hope. 
I remember him coming and coming over to the house. Get up, son! Get up! This isn't you! This isn't you! God's not done. God's not done. God will use this. God will use this. God is going to use this to reach people. God is going to use this to touch people. It's not what I wanted to hear. He was intense. He was an intense man. Sometimes he was so intense it was annoying. Sometimes it was so intense you're just like, oh, would you please just go away? No, but he would get right down in the pit of it with you. Right down. He'd jump in the mud. Waist deep. Get up, son. God's going to use this. God is going to touch people through this. You'll never be the same. That's what he would always say to me. You're never going to be the same, but you will be stronger. You will rise up. You will make a comeback and you will carry on. And he was right. I just wish I would listen to him sooner and later because you know, we went through a process, him and I, but he was always faithful. You know, he had a gift. A gift. And the best way I can describe it, and it, it turns out to be probably my most favorite verse in the Bible, actually two verses, is 2 Corinthians 5, 17. 16 and 17. That's the key verses. Verse 16 says, For therefore... We now no longer know anyone according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. See, Dad had a way of looking at someone and seeing right past their faults, their mistakes, their filth. My wife stated it perfectly the other day. She had just found out that her daddy had passed and she's bursting out in prayer. And she said, Lord, that's my treasure hunter. He was a treasure hunter. He had the ability to dig through all the boulders, all the trees, all the topsoil and find precious gems, precious nuggets, precious jewelry. And bring it to the surface in each and every one of us. Bring it to the surface so that we would shine. He would show us what we didn't know was there. He would build us up. He would give us hope when we thought there was no hope. He would, he would show us that we were worth something. He would show us that we had a purpose. And then after that, after he saw the spark in our, 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 our eye or anybody's eye, he would then make sure that they knew the true riches. And they grabbed a hold of what was really worth something. And that's Jesus Christ. Because that was his mission. That was his goal. His goal was that everyone would shine for Jesus. See, he was always talking about something called the ripple effect. Where as we get one person saved, and that person gets two people saved, and that person gets four people saved, and then the growth, the growth, the growth will go exponentially. Exponentially means it grows brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. His goal is that everybody would know his Jesus the way he knew Jesus. His goal was that people would shine brighter and brighter and brighter. And uniquely, he didn't really care if people came to his church. Don't get me wrong, he loved when people came to his church. But he just wanted people to be serving God. He wanted people to be serving Jesus. He wanted people to see that they were worth something. He wanted people to have a hope. He wanted that void to be filled. He wanted that empty spot inside of you to be filled with something other than than the false alternative. He wanted true happiness, true healing, true fulfillment for each and every one of us. 
I remember times he, he, he would call me up and he would find out that, that one of his kids was going back to church and going to this church and he was just so happy. It wasn't even his church. It was another church. He didn't care. He was about kingdom business. He was about building the kingdom and being about kingdom business. Matthew 6.33 says, If we seek him first and his righteousness, then all these other things will be added to us. Dad knew that. He wanted people to know his Jesus. <sighs> Even in your darkest times, he would find a way to make you shine. In Jeremiah 29, 11, God says, For I know the thoughts I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So even in these darkest times, we can take courage. Even in these painful times, we can have hope. Even in this quarantine, lockdown, can't see your family times, we can have hope. We can have a future because there's going to be a day when we can congregate once again. There's going to be a day when we're going to run in this building and we're going to rejoice and we're going to jump and laugh and hug and hold each other. Well, there's going to be a day when we see our daddy, our shepherd, our pastor again. You know, and I get hope in this. 2 Corinthians 5, 8 says, To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So I know where he's at. I know where my shepherd is at. I know where my mentor is at. And though it may hurt, hurt for a moment, there will be a day with no more pain, no more tears. And I get joy when I think about him up there. See, if anybody knew him, you know just how loud he was. There's nobody louder than him. And I can picture him up there with his arms out straight like he always does, jumping with his little belly shaking, going, Hallelujah! Oh, Jesus! Wow! Wow! Oh, hallelujah! Hallelujah! Did I tell you? I've got nine kids and 14 grandbabies, and I was a cement mason for 42 years. Oh, praise God! That brings me joy. Because that's the truth. You know, facts change all the time. But the truth endures forever. And this word right here that gives us our hope, this word right here that gives us our peace, that this word right here that gives us our expectancy, this word is truth. And it is everlasting, it is unending, and it will never fail you. Even at times when you think it's failed you, it has never failed you. And sooner or later, you end up realizing that. Yep, you're right, God. You didn't, you didn't fail me. Oh. He always instilled in us that happiness and joy are two different things. You see, happiness comes and goes. You get a big paycheck, a big bonus, it makes you happy. See your kids learn how to ride a bike, it makes you happy. But happiness can be taken away by circumstances. You get in a car wreck, you're unhappy. You lose your shepherd, you're unhappy. Life hits you, you're unhappy. But joy, 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 if you choose joy, it is not dictated by circumstances. Amen. It is not dictated by your situation. Because your joy is in the Lord, and the Lord is alive, and he is never-ending, and he is always faithful. So sorrow may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. So church, I, I encourage you today to choose joy. On this day that we celebrate the joy of knowing that we serve a risen king, a risen Lord. A joy knowing that one day we're all going to be reunited in heaven. 
And we're going to be praising and singing. And that was a perfect song she picked was Raise a Hallelujah. Because that's what's going to be happening. So I said all that to get to my next point. <laughs> Is many of you have a lot of concerns and questions about what's next. What now? What are we going to do? I'd be lying to you if I told you that wasn't one of the first things that popped into my head. What now? What new? What are we going to do? I've been seeking the Lord on that question this whole week, and my wife and I have been talking about it. And in one of our discussions, we came, we came across the, the stunning analogy or metaphor. I don't know the correct word. I want to encourage you today, church, that 2,000 years ago, there was another group of believers wondering the very same thing. You see, they had lost their shepherd. They had lost their mentor. And they were wondering, what are we going to do next? Then came Sunday. Then came Sunday. And their shepherd was risen. Their king is alive. Then came Sunday. The very reason we are rejoicing and celebrating today. Because in the risen Christ, they were given hope. And the risen Christ, they were given strength. And then when, we, when he ascended to heaven, he didn't just leave them. He left them with another helper. Another comforter. You see, church, it was Christ and dad that made him so special. It was the, it was the amount of love of Christ that he let flow through him that made him so special. It's Christ in you that makes you special. Colossians 127 says, it's Christ in us. The hope of glory. Because of what happened on that day, because of having a risen Lord, he conquered death. He conquered the grave. And now he abides in each and every one of his believers. I've been spending a lot of time kind of going over the last two months in my head. Mom and I were just talking about it yesterday. I, I find it of, of no coincidence that two of Dad's last few sermons were, were titled something that I kind of get a, a chuckle at right now. One was called, Where Do We Go From Here? The other one was called, Let the Journey Begin. I find it no, of no coincidence that in the last two months, he appointed leaders in his church over certain departments. He was pulling treasure out of each and every one of us Showing us that we could shine for Jesus. This next one, I'm going to try not to cry. Pastor Don, it's of no coincidence that the very morning of his passing, he rose up and he laid hands on you and declared that you are not under his shadow anymore. You don't have to be under his shadow. And you will rise up and step into the calling that God's called you to do. I don't find that a coincidence. So back to the question of what's next. 
And what do we do now? We shine. Church, we shine. We shine like we've never shown before. Men, we shine in our homes. It's time that we start shining in our homes. We shine in the workplace. We're like, Dad, we shine at the grocery store. We shine at the bank. We shine. The vision goes on. The work carries on. The church goes on. And we shine. Matthew 5.16, the word tells us to let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Church, it's time to shine. In these times of uncertainty, we can shine a sense of certainty into people's lives. In this time of hopelessness, we can shine hope into people's lives. I know we can't go out and see everybody in person and face to face how we'd like to right now, but I'll tell you what, with a click of a button and a swipe of a finger, we could reach the entire, anywhere in the world, anytime we wanted to. So let's shine. You see, Dad had a vision. He had a vision of a church who understood that there was more to ministry than going to a building on Sunday. He had a vision of a church who understood that each and every one of them had, a, had their own ministry. He had a vision of a church that would shine for Jesus seven days of the week, that would take the gospel everywhere they go, to the grocery store, to the dog pound, to the post office. Dad did that. And I'll tell you what, when I first met him, it was the most embarrassing thing in the world. <laughs> we are standing in the middle of the cheese aisle and you're praying so loud with this person. Oh my gosh, I'm mortified. People are going to hear. <laughs> oh, but he would shine. He would shine. <sighs> we will continue to go on. We will never be the same. But we will be stronger. And we will shine brighter. And brighter. And brighter. Personally, for me, there's been a verse on my heart all year long. I've just been stuck on it. And uh, I would, I would, Pop and I would have been talking about this one verse several times and it seems like we've gone through a lot of seasons this in this in this short year so far one thing after another after another after another and this last one was like oh wow the way we react to what comes against against us speaks mountains to people in who need Jesus. The way we, we respond to adversity, the way we respond to heartache, the way we respond to persecution speaks mountains to the non-believers. The verse is 1 Peter 3.15. It says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be prepared to give a reason to anyone actually it says prepared to give a defense to anyone who asks a reason for the hope that is in you see when life comes at you when life be beats you down when life, when life knocks you down How you react is a witness. 
People go, aren't you afraid? Aren't you afraid of the coronavirus? Yeah, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Aren't you afraid of the economy? No, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. With all that's going on in the world right now, with everything that comes against us, we keep hope. Yes, we may feel struck down at the moment, but we're not destroyed. No, we're not allowed to congregate at the moment, but we're not abandoned. Yes, the economy looks grim at the moment, but my God is my supply. Yes, people are scared of a virus, but I'm kept by the power of God. Yes, we're suddenly without a shepherd. But God's grace is sufficient for us. Yes, some of you may have messed up in life, messed up royal. But your Redeemer lives. So we will go on. We will get stronger. We'll go on with the message of hope. We'll go on with the message of faith. And then the verse that just speaks not only about father, dad is John 13 35 by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another see he was all about love this book right here it's all about love it's all about a God that loved us so much that he made a way for us. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. It's a love story. Ooh. We were telling stories about Pastor John at church the other day. Or at, at the house the other day. It seemed appropriate because he was a storyteller. And they were telling stories about him on the job site. You know, he was a big guy. I don't know how tall he was. I'm guessing he was about 6'2", 260 at times. And he was known as the hugger on the job site. Instruction guy, roughnecks. He was known as the hugger. Always hugging on people, telling them he loves them, telling them Jesus loves them. It's kind of funny how somehow I became known as the hugger at work. And I was never a hugger. It's because that's the kind of impact he had on people. Another way it was put the other day was he was infectious. His love was infectious. He never kept track when people suffered, when he was suffered wrong by others. He always reached out to restore the fallen, to restore those who had walked away. He always ran to embrace the person who felt overlooked. And he would run to embrace the person who felt undesired. So that's what we do. We go on with that vision of love. We go on with that vision of hope. And we go on with that vision of faith. And church, I don't know how else to put it to you, but we shine. And on a side note, to all the people who may have been touched by John Flowers, and that's a lot of people over the years. If you happen to hear this message, I want to encourage you that all of that work that he sowed into you does not have to go for granted. You can still shine. got it off my chest <laughs> you guys I really hope that encouraged you um, I, I felt that 
God really needed me to, to get that out. And I just want to encourage you guys. Pastor Don's going to be reaching out to everybody in the church via a Zoom, a Zoom meeting at some point this week. Um, I'd appreciate it if you guys continue to lift her up in your prayers. Hold her up. Church, there's some times when you need people to hold your hands up for you because you're so weak and you're so tired that you feel like you can't do it on your own. So continue to keep her in your prayers. Keep our family in your prayers. And I bless you, church. I want you to enjoy your Easter Sunday. Remember, I know this wasn't a typical Easter message or a conventional Easter message, but these aren't conventional times. So remember what we're celebrating today. Bless you guys.